Good morning, everyone. I'm Perry Peltz. I'm in for Matt Lauer. Here's what you're waking up to. The president will personally lobby Congress today for the votes he needs to pass his deficit reduction package after his televised sales pitch to the public last night. In Los Angeles, a sentencing hearing is scheduled today for the two cops convicted of the Rodney King beating. And investigators believe they've tracked down the cause of Manhattan's water contamination, construction at the reservoir, birds, and heavy usage. It is time to talk about the day that is upon us. It was so hot still last night. Early <laughs> evening, I was in the park, and it was scorching. More of the same. I missed you in the park. I, I was there, too, anyway, but you're you. right. <laughs> it's more of the same all over again. Hazy, hot, and humid, but this time with a cool front that will bring some relief, we have a chance of some thunderstorms in the area late today, late this afternoon, early this evening. And some of those could be big boomers, so we'll be tracking that very closely. Now let's check that traffic situation with Nancy Remy. Nancy. Thanks, Joe. Good morning. Overnight construction at the Gothels Bridge has just been cleared. You can still anticipate a residual delay. There's still plenty of construction around the tri-state area. We'll talk about that in a bit. Alternate side is suspended around most of the New York City area. And mass transit's on time. As we await the opening for the markets, we'll say good morning to Doug Ramsey with the business report. Doug. Good morning, Nancy. Interest rates hit a record low in the bond market yesterday as investors gambled that the budget compromise will pass the Senate this week. The Dow closed basically unchanged Tuesday, though. Those stories and an update on all the overseas markets. But first, back to Perry with the sports headlines. Okay, Doug, thanks. In sports, the Yankees dropped to three games behind Toronto after an 8-6 to loss to the Blue Jays. And the Mets snap a two-game winning streak with a 3-1 to loss to the Expo. We'll have those details coming up. Now to the top story of the morning. President Clinton heads for Capitol Hill today to sell his budget to Democrats in the House. The president pitched the budget directly to the voters last night, saying he'll sign an executive order today to make sure that all new taxes go to deficit reduction. Sandy Gilmore reports. The president pleaded with viewers and Congress, saying his budget with nearly $250 billion in new taxes would mostly affect the rich while helping average Americans. No more something for nothing. We're all in this together. Under the plan, most taxes fall on the affluent, along with a 10% surtax on incomes over $250,000, all retroactive to January 1st. It increases the amount of Social Security benefits that are taxable. It increases taxes on corporations. The biggest burden on the middle class will be a modest 4.3 cent a gallon tax hike on gasoline, a point Clinton wanted to drive home. This is the only new tax working people will pay. Partly to grab the possibly decisive vote of wavering Senator Dennis DeConcini of Arizona, the president announced he will sign orders Wednesday setting up a special deficit trust fund for taxes. Passing this plan will be a bold step. In response, Senate Republican leader Bob Dole attacked the plan as bad for jobs, business, and retirees. The world will not end if this bill is defeated. In fact, defeating this bill will mark not an end, but a new beginning. Sandy Gilmore, NBC News, at the White House. It's now up to the full Senate to consider the president's nominee for FBI Director Louis Free. The federal judge from New York breezed through the Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday, winning unanimous approval. The full Senate is expected to confirm him within the next three days before the summer recess. And another New Yorker, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, will be sworn on to the Supreme Court next week. The Brooklyn native was confirmed by the Senate 93-3, to becoming the second woman ever to join the high court. This is a bizarre story. A fire truck accident has critically injured a fire victim this morning. The tower truck apparently fell on him, fracturing his skull. Two firefighters in the tower were seriously injured. They were attempting to rescue two pe people at a two-alarm blaze in Harlem when the tower toppled. Two suspects are under arrest this morning for the murders of four members of the same Connecticut family. And two suspected gun runners arrested in the city are believed to have links to Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman. A cache of guns was recovered after the pair allegedly tried to sell weapons to federal agents. The fight against crime brought millions of people out of their homes last night. It was the 10th annual National Night Out, a symbolic evening in the battle against crime. Thousands of communities like this one in Hackensack took to the streets and held candlelight demonstrations in an effort to take back their neighborhoods from criminals. Well, what do you think? You suppose Matt's having a good time sleeping in this week while he's on the evening news? I'm sure he's up at this hour watching us. Oh, sure. Good well, morning, Matt. How are late. you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember that. Reverse the schedule. That's right. right. That's right. Anyway, we're missing you, Matt, but Perry, you're doing a fine job. Anyway, let's get Change to the weather, thanks. shall we? Yes. <laughs> let's get to the weather, shall we? Yes, indeed, outside right now. 
In a few minutes, I'll be down there. We're at the Circle Line Tour down south of South Street Seaport at 6.05. Temperature is 76 degrees, and they're getting the ship warmed up for me. Right now, we'll take a look at the satellite time lapse. We had a little uh, decrease in humidity at it yesterday, humidity yesterday, but that's not what we're going to have by tomorrow, thanks to that band of clouds moving one more time right across the Great Lakes, and those are going to be thunderstorm clouds for us. So let's get to forecast map for day. Hot, humid, morning clouds, high of 93, some strong thunderstorms by this afternoon, and relief coming Thursday, tomorrow. Less humid conditions. That will be very welcome news. Boy, it sure will. They're not already doing tours out there in the circle line this morning, are nope. they? Nope. They're starting today, though, with what we call half a circle tour, and we'll have more on that later on in the program. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. And now, Nancy Remy, we know the circle line is on time. How's everything looking on the roads? Actually, other mass transit's doing okay as well. Perry, good morning to you. As we get going around the tri-state area, construction still abounds, though. We're taking our check in the Bronx. Cross Bronx Expressway has road work both ways between the Alexander Hamilton Bridge and Westchester Avenue, so expect some delays with the lane restrictions there. And further east, we still have at least two lanes shut down coming in toward the approach of the Bronx River Parkway, so we'll be looking for some extra volume there as well. Over at our Hudson River crossings in from New Jersey, no trouble, but on the northbound western spur of the turnpike, travelers are going to find left lane construction already set up approaching interchange 16W at Route 3. Volume, though, still trouble free on both the eastern and western spurs from end to end in either direction. Making your way at the Nassau Queens border, we had all lanes shut on the eastbound LIE out from the Queens line to Lakeville Road, but the overnight repair work has just been cleared for the day, and the lanes are open on the eastbound side. Eastbound Grand Central Parkway Northern State combination is still a better idea, though. West Found both the LIE and the Northern State are looking good out through Suffolk and Nassau. And finally, Perry, with the exception of Bay Ridge and Diker Heights sections of Brooklyn, alternate side of the street parking regulations are suspended today in other areas, and most trains and buses are rolling on time. Perry? Okay, thanks a lot, Nancy. Okay. It is time for business. Doug Ramsey on the budget's effect already on bonds. Hi, Doug. Hi, Jane. There is a growing conviction in the bond market anyway that the budget compromise will pass Congress this week. That conviction sent interest rates on government bonds sharply lower yesterday. The yield on the benchmark 30-year Treasury dropped to just 6.51 percent, its lowest level since the government began regularly auctioning those bonds in 1977. Despite the lower rates, though, the stock market went nowhere Tuesday. The Dow Industrials gained barely a quarter of a point, and the Nasdaq index of over-the-counter stocks was up just over one point. Overseas, Japan's Nikkei average gained nearly 140 points overnight. British stocks, though, are down about 4.5 points in early London trading today. All's quiet on the currency markets over in Europe today, but America's largest bank is counting its profits. Last night, Citicorp chairman John Reed said the bank is making a lot of money from the European currency turmoil. In recent days, in fact, investors have been trading currencies very heavily, as you know, Jane, and Citicorp is making a lot of money because it is the world's largest foreign exchange trader. Back to you. Okay. Doug, you say that the stock market didn't respond to the news of a budget compromise. Do you expect that to change as we move closer to a decision? Well, the stock market doesn't know what to think about this compromise. On the one hand, they like the fact that uh, the compromise means keeping interest rates very low. On the other hand, the higher taxes that individuals and companies are going to have to pay as a result of this budget deficiting, deficit cutting exercise uh, is generally bad for the stock market. So at least for now, it's on hold. Okay, Doug, thanks a lot. It's now 6.08. Coming up, the suspected cause of last week's mysterious water contamination, plus a visit from our doctor. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. Coming up, plastic surgery for your personality? Some people just know how to fly. The people who made Northwest Airlines the on-time leader for three years in a row, who made World Perks the highest-rated frequent flyer program, and with global partners. It is 611. We have 77 degrees. Welcome back to Today in New York. Environmental authorities think they have finally pinpointed the source of the water contamination in Manhattan. Because of traces of E. coli bacteria, thousands of people spent days boiling or buying bottled water. Now city and federal environmental officials put most of the blame on the Hillview Reservoir in Yonkers. The factors to this problem uh, relate to the construction going on at uh, Hillview Reservoir. The uh, large uh, demand for water due to the heat wave that we've been experiencing recently. Officials also say seagull droppings may have been the source of the E. coli contamination. And as you heard, are blaming construction work near the reservoir that hamper hampered purification. The recommendation now is to cover the reservoir until construction is completed. 
A young Brooklyn girl is alive and well this morning thanks to an experimental bone marrow transplant from her baby brother. Marlene Alonzo had a deadly form of leukemia with a bone marrow transplant her only chance at survival. Doctors couldn't find a donor with the right blood type, so they operated using cells from the umbilical cord of her newborn brother, Kelvin. And God will tell us. But as far as we're concerned, I think she has no evidence of leukemia right now. And doctors say the surgery's success could be great news for other patients unable to find marrow donors. Prozac has become one of the most frequently prescribed drugs. It's also become one of the most controversial because of its effect on personality. Dr. Dean Adele reports. Doctors have become accustomed to patients asking for surgery they don't really need, from a new improved nose to thinner thighs. Somehow, that's become routine. But this little green pill has raised the bar. Prozac, no stranger to controversy, is in the limelight once again, this time because it works just a little too well. The debate, if a patient has the right to change their looks, why not the right to change their personality? This new book really says it all. It's called Listening to Prozac by psychiatrist Peter Kramer, who writes what a lot of doctors have been saying for the past few years, that Prozac's effects go beyond treatment, that it can fundamentally change your personality. The book gives several examples. Patients who say Prozac did more than just lift the veil of depression. These patients felt better than well. Their personalities emerged after years of silence. Kramer wonders whether that impressive evidence might lead to fundamental changes in our psychological makeup. There's a, a significant number of people who are suffering from depression who go untreated for um, their entire lifetime. Psychiatrist Patricia Spire agrees Prozac is a remarkable drug that can help millions of people. But like many doctors, she's concerned it'll be taken by people who don't really need it. People will want certain things and they will ask for them. Now, whether or not doctors comply with that is, I think, a really important ethical question. You don't want to give someone a medication unless they're suffering. I mean, Freud talked about um, uh, the, outcome of the, the ideal outcome of treatment being that um, someone would have just normal human suffering. Doctors are concerned that if Prozac is used to treat normal human suffering, it will change society in dramatic ways, stifling the dark emotions that drive a musician or an artist. Most doctors agree the mind should be held to a higher standard than the body. Changing personality should not be as simple as changing a nose. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. And tomorrow, Dr. Dean will look at possible links between dementia and vitamin deficiency. It's now 6.15. We have 77 degrees. Coming up, traffic troubles and temperatures in the 90s. Joe Whitty will have that forecast. Plus, Al Roker previews tonight's television star-studded event at the Apollo. So don't go away. Be afraid. Catch the rhythm. Move your feet. To the grown-up playground. Right down the street. Man, nobody be. Cheap thrills, you could hang light off the World Trade Center. Yeehaw! Or you could go to Howe Caverns, the great wonder down under, just west of Albany. See the pages of history unfold at the New York Renaissance Festival. Weekends now through mid-September at Sterling Forest, Tuxedo, New York. A&S Semi-Annual Home Sale brings you every mattress in stock, half price, every famous brand, every size, every style, half price. Plus, buy any premium set and get an extra twenty to sixty dollars off. Any Sealy Posture Pedic, Serta Perfect Sleeper, Simmons Beauty Rest, Stearns and Foster Correct Comfort, half price, plus an extra twenty to sixty dollars off. Plus, confirmed delivery date, free in home setup, free carton removal, free bed frame. It's the bedding sale that's got it all. Right now at A&S. Terrific. If you drive a stick shift, you probably make over 70,000 shifts a year. Sooner or later, you'll experience some kind of problem. And will it be a big problem or a small one? It takes a trained technician to know. At Amco Centers, they've serviced enough stick shifts to distinguish between the two. Half the sticks they service only need clutch work, not a new transmission. Next time you throw a shift that doesn't feel just right, come to Amco. Don't play games with your transmission. Amco, AA, MCO.
It's now 617. We have 77 degrees. You can see they're getting ready for Joe Witte's arrival down there. Yeah. Our top stories this morning. It's sentencing day in Los Angeles for two police officers convicted of the Rodney King beating. The president lobbies Congress for his budget today following up last night's televised sales pitch to the voters. And a historic town has given up a heroic effort to save itself and is bracing for the Mississippi River floodwaters today. Yeah, well, brace yourself for this. We're going to have another hot and humid day with a chance of some strong thunderstorms late in the afternoon. Temperatures will be in the low 90s today, but some much-needed rain from those thunderstorms could help lower the humidity. And Joe Witte says tomorrow we can accept, expect partly sunny skies with temperatures in the 80s and much lower humidity. Wow, doesn't that sound great? Now, why am I doing the weather? Because we kicked Joe out because of his forecast. No, only kidding. Joe's on his way to the South Street Seaport, where Circle Line is kicking off a new tour, and he's going to tell us all about that in the next half hour. Now, let's talk to Nancy Remy, find out what's happening on the roads. Hi, Nance. Good morning, Jane. And for today, we've got another muggy morning for a midweek rush hour, so we get started by checking in on Long Island. At this point, LIE road work has been cleared for the day over on the eastbound side, coming out from uh, the Queens-Nassau border, and also making your way through Suffolk County, we're clear. However, However, we can anticipate on the South Shore in Nassau a delay on the eastbound Southern State near Hempstead Lake. We've got some emergency construction that's keeping the left lane closed for a while through that area. Westbound still looks okay. In the Bronx, for Cross Bronx Expressway travelers, eastbound road work near the Alexander Hamilton Bridge and Webster Avenue has just been cleared. However, we still can look for the buildup in at least two lanes are shut down coming in toward the area of the Bronx River Parkway. That should hopefully be cleared up shortly as well. Making your way at our Hudson River crossing, so far, so light overnight road work cleared again at all three crossings inbound under a five minute delay at the george washington bridge minor delays inbound at both the holland and the lincoln tunnels and lastly jen we've just gotten word of an accident over on the northbound bandwick coming up and toward the lie so anticipate a build up there jane okay we will thanks nance thanks nancy tonight at 7 30 channel 4 goes uptown to pay tribute to the legendary apollo theater news 4's al roker gives us a sample of some of the stars who will glitter in that broadcast the names of the best that's ever been. The Apollo Theater was one of the first to introduce them. This week, as the Apollo Theater prepares to induct 25 of the greatest into its Hall of Fame, the stars are coming back. They're Smokey. And Chuck Jackson's here as well. It's kind of like old home weekend, isn't it? It is an old home weekend. Uh, I just, all of us are looking at each other and we're just, and everybody looks great. You see, this is <laughs> so fantastic. <laughs> Backstage at the Apollo, they've been reminiscing about the old days and sharing the history of this place with us. So this is like my beginning and a place that I always welcome myself back to because without the Apollo, I, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't be in the business. When the night has come African Americans got their start at the Apollo Theater. The Apollo has actually prided itself on being a place where all forms of music could flourish. We talk about the Afro American culture, but you know, we used to have a lot of um, white performers coming up and doing their thing just as well. It was always like a melting pot here at the Apollo, and it's going to continue to be now. Al Roker, News 4 New York. And again, that is at 7 30 tonight, right here on Channel 4. You're going to watch? You bet. You stay up? <laughs> <laughs> Till 8, I'll make a night of it. <laughs> Coming up, Mets outfielder Vince Coleman is now facing felony charges in Los Angeles. Before we get to that story in the sports, here are some lottery numbers. Six twenty-three, seventy-seven degrees on a day that promises to bring us once more heat and humidity. Mets outfielder Vince Coleman will soon be on his way to Los Angeles, where he will surrender on felony charges next week. Prosecutors simply found the firecracker incident too serious to let it fizzle. Tiwa Chang reports. We treated the matter very seriously by virtue of our selection of a felony charge as opposed to a misdemeanor charge. The Los Angeles District Attorney's Office filed a single felony charge against Mets outfielder Vince Coleman. He's charged with felony possession of an explosive for tossing a firework equivalent to a quarter stick of dynamite at fans outside of Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles 10 days ago. Three people were hurt, including two-year-old Amanda Santos and Cindy Mayhew. Maybe this will teach everyone that, that they're not above the law. New York attorney said legally the charge was neither harsh nor lenient. I think they've taken a centrist position, a middle-of-the-road position. They could have indicted him for a very serious felony of assault. They could have 
charged him with a misdemeanor. Uh, they're going to be very careful in this case. The 31-year-old Colm is expected not to contest the charge and turn himself in next week in Los Angeles. Sport fans at former Mets Rusty Staub's restaurant in Manhattan approved of the felony charges, though wanting stiffer ones. I think that there's no excuse for it and that just because he's some big sports hero. The behavior is disgusting. And an attempt, a, uh, an attempt to rationalize that a week later uh, is, is, is almost more insulting than the original incident. As a first-time offender, Coleman will probably not spend time in jail, but the victims plan to sue for millions. T. Wa Chang, News 4, New York. And it is, of course, time for us to continue on with all the rest of the sports coming from the pros here. I'm here. Take it away. I feel good and confident. The Mets lost in Montreal last night, snapping their two-game winning streak. The Expos won 3-1. to one. Montreal got all their runs in the first. Larry Walker with the shot off Frank Tanana, and it gets stuck in the wall. Look at that. A run fourth. He whacked a solo homer off Jeff Fazero. 3-1 to one was the final score. At the stadium last night, the Yankees lost another game to Toronto, playing for the first time with Ricky Henderson in their lineup. The Blue Jays beat the Bombers final 8-6. Just misses a game-tying homer, Rats. It's a run-scoring double, but they got no closer after that. And the Yankees lose 8-6. to six. The Bombers now go into tonight, tonight's game trailing Toronto by three games. Yuck. Broadcast history in Cincinnati last night. NBC's own Gail Gardner probably became the first woman to ever call TV play-by-play -play of a big league game. She worked for the Colorado Rockies. It is unusual to hear a woman's voice doing I know, that. It sounded but pretty good. Yeah. Good, good going, Gail. I hope to see some more. Now, from baselines, we now turn to punchlines with joke master Jay Leno. Our comedy curtain rises with Jay looking at a body but true tale right out of Hollywood. Of the year in this town, here in Hollywood over the weekend, police uh, arrested a woman who was known as the Madam to the Stars, and she's threatening to sell her story for $1 million. You know, it's really strange watching people get arrested in Hollywood. This is the only place in the world where you can watch the reading of the rights and the selling of the rights all at the same time. <laughs> Coming up in Today in New York at 6.30, the president takes his budget battle to Capitol Hill, and an historic river town gives up and prepares to succumb to the floods. Plus, a man is critically injured when a rescue tower falls as firefighters battle a Harlem blaze. And Circle Line Tours offers a new route for time-conscious New Yorkers who want to see the sights. When you step outside your door this morning, you're going to find it's already plenty sticky. So we sent Joe Witte out to find out Get for himself sticky. just how bad it is. Hi, Joe. You're at the South Street Seaport. Yeah, South, South Street here? Seaport. Yes. Big celebration going on right now. It's a touch on the humid side, but temperature is at 76 degrees. So if you want to do some morning exercising, today or this morning is the time to do it because by the afternoon we'll be in the 90s with high humidity one more time. Again, right now, 76 degrees. Forecast for today, another one of those hazy, hot, and humid days. Overcast to start out this morning, then some afternoon sunshine, and that's going to warm up the lower atmosphere and give us a good chance of some very strong thunderstorms with a cold front moving through late this afternoon. That will also help kick off strong thunderstorms, heavy downpours, not everywhere, but we do have to watch this. There's a slight risk of some very powerful storms. Later on this evening, the front moves on through. We turn partly cloudy. So in the five-day forecast, we're looking awfully good. We've got a much better chance of having a decent day on Thursday. Lower humidity, comfortable temperatures in the 80s. Finally, some relief on its way. I am down at South Street Seaport, and if you take a look, we got semicircles everywhere. Semicircle cake, semicircle uh, sandwiches. We have a semicircle tour of Manhattan to talk about in just a few more minutes. Perry, a little breakfast for you, or Jane, what would you like? A semicircle what? Is that a semicircle pasta? Pasta. Not, is there what pasta red, there? White, there it blue. is. Right over there, yes. See, We've Jane? Got... I know my pasta. Well, you sure do. Thank you. I didn't think that was pasta. I thought it was chives and onions and something else. <laughs> <Real> bagels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, we'll move right along. Bring us back some, Joe. All right, good. Time now to check in with Nancy Remy and see how things are moving along on the roads. Hi again, Nancy.
Thanks, Perry. Good morning to you. And as Wednesdays go, it's not too bad out there. We're taking a check in Queens, though. There is a buildup over on the northbound side of the Van Wyck Expressway, just in through College Point at the LIE. We have tow truck on the scene of a one-car accident. Shouldn't be out there too much longer. Westbound LIE is just starting to build up. No problem in through to the fairgrounds. And the Grand Central westbound is even better with light to moderate traffic in through Queens. In Nassau County, we got the good word over on the south shore. Southern state cleared of uh, emergency construction near Hempstead Lake. The left lane eastbound has just been reopened through to that area, and the westbound side is also in good shape. Looking good on other major roadways east and westbound, making your way through Suffolk and Nassau County. We'll check out some good news for travelers over in the Nutmeg State, over on the southbound Connecticut Turnpike. All is providing an easy ride out from Bridgeport down through Stanford at exit 9. It's moderate volume, and we're clear right into toward Greenwich Merritt Parkway and Route 1, also in good shape. And lastly, alternate side of the street parking regulations suspended around most of New York City. Just got word in Brooklyn of an accident eastbound belt coming in toward the Mill Basin drawbridge. Perry? Nancy, thanks very much. Okay. Let us check the business. Doug Ramsey has a stock to watch and the latest from overseas. Good morning, Doug. Good morning again, Jane. Despite the strong yen, which is supposed to uh, encourage or discourage Japanese exports, Japan's trade surplus with the rest of the world is actually getting bigger, not smaller. Tokyo says that that surplus in goods and services widened from $9.5 billion in May to more than $10.5 billion in June. That news came out after the stock market in Tokyo closed today, with the Nikkei average up almost 140 points on hopes for an early cut in Japanese interest rates after the election of a new prime minister that's scheduled for tomorrow. The Dow Industrials treaded water on Tuesday day ahead of the July unemployment report and the Senate vote on the budget, both of those scheduled for Friday. Some mixed reports on the economy, though. The index of leading indicators was up just a fraction in June, reflecting weakness in manufacturing. But in the first half of this year, fewer businesses went bust. The number of corporate failures actually fell almost 10 percent. One stock to keep an eye on today is Snapple. It's been a high flyer all year, and for good reason. Last night, the company said profits nearly tripled in the second quarter compared to a year ago. Sales of Snapple's iced tea, for instance, are running double what they were one year ago. Here in the Northeast, Jane, overall sales at Snapple Apple are up 60% so far this year. Back hey, to you. Hey, Doug, is that a reflection of our changing tastes? So what products are they replacing? Bottled water or soda? Any ideas? Well, soda, soda pop is, uh, especially the secondary brands, are less uh, favored right now. And these considered to be somewhat more natural drinks, like Snapple, are doing a lot better. It's also a, a marketing coup on the part of Snapple, though. Those ads you see on all over TV and in print are, are really selling a lot of this product. Aha, uh -huh, so their uh, advertising dollars are paying off. They sure are. Okay, thanks, Doug. Thanks a lot, Doug. It's now 640. Coming up, area residents react to the president's TV address laying out his formula for new taxes and federal spending cuts. Hello again. It is 641. We have 76 degrees on a day that promises to bring us more heat and humidity. President Clinton will head to Capitol Hill this morning, pressing for passage of his embattled budget. In his Oval Office address last night, the president says his plan reduces the federal deficit. He also said that many families will not see an income tax hike. And there is just a small increase in the gas tax. I don't like taxes any more than you do. But our nation is in economic danger. And now we've got to take this problem we inherited, you and I, and do something about it. We have to take responsibility for change. Both the president and Senate Republican leader Robert Dole invited voters to call senators and Congress members about the bill. Ten million calls lit up the Capitol switchboard in just the first two hours after his address. And as Congress considers the president's package, they'll be looking to their constituents and asking, will they pay? News 4's Dave Browdy went to Brooklyn to see if people are buying the tax bill. If the question is, will they pay, here on Ocean Parkway near Avenue Z, there's a sense among those who watch the president with us, there really isn't much choice. But then, a few here make $180,000 a year, the level at which the president says his tax increases become significant. The president did best when he told these older viewers those who oppose his plan would cut their benefits more. Every alternative offered by the opponents of change begins with deep cuts in the health care of older Americans. Whether or not it's true, on Ocean Parkway, that's accepted as the gospel. It, it, it's fair for everyone. They should pay it. It's fair for everyone. Fair for the, well, for the middle class. And what you're paying more, he, he's got a very good idea. His speech makes a lot of sense common sense and something has to be done and he comes across as very sincere and I think Congress should pass his bill. 
Many of the older members of our group agree big deficits are a major problem and more taxes inevitable. I will contribute with the other millions of people and all of us together will make this a better United States. Well, how else are we going to, you know, get the deficit down? How will we get ahead? The 4.3 cent a gallon gasoline tax was accepted here. Few of these people drive much. It was the younger and working people who raised substantial objections to the president's proposals. I've, I'm paying enough taxes as it is. I'm paying, you know, the city taxes, the federal, the state, and that's uh, that's plenty for me. That's they've got a lot of money to work with. One area of senator you'd expect to be with President Clinton on this one isn't. New Jersey's Frank Lautenberg is a Democrat, but he's voting against the tax plan. He's up for re-election this year, and voting for new taxes when you're running for re-election is generally considered bad politics. Dave Browdy, News 4. An historic town has given up after a daring move to save itself from the raging waters of the Mississippi. The people of Prairie du Roche have evacuated their town after National Guard troops helped in an effort to divert floodwaters from the city. They broke a levee intentionally flooding one area to spare another. But the strategy has apparently failed. Deeper waters could mean safer waters for a wayward whale off Orchard Beach. And marine biologists say that's exactly where this young pilot whale headed last night. The whale has been in waters just off the Bronx since Saturday. Experts still don't know why, but they've tried everything to coax the mammal to open waters. They're afraid it might have died in the shallow depths. Probably won't be seeing any whales on a new Manhattan boat tour that's starting up at the South Street <laughs> Seaport, but you're going to see a lot else. Joe Whitty is down there right now to tell us more. Hi, Joe. Ship ahoy, Jane Perry. I'm on the Circle Line Tour boat, and with me, the president of Circle Line Tours here in New York. But I think he's half a president today. And why is that? August Charity. August, what's happening? Because we're inaugurating the semicircle cruise today. So we're all halves today. Now, the Circle Line Tour, historically, for the past 40 years, has been a boat ride around the entire island of Manhattan, taking about three hours. You're doing half of that. Why? Well, it's actually uh, as a result of demand from our customers over the years requesting a shorter cruise. Everybody doesn't have as much time anymore, so we've uh, searched around Manhattan and uh, our friends down here at the seaport, we made a really great marriage and we're going to sail out of here every day, uh, 10, 12, 2 and 4, 7 days a week. And where do you sail to? And we're going to sail around half the island. Right, gonna, so you go over by the Statue of Liberty? Up around the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, then come back and go up the East River, up uh, a little close to the UN, a little bit short of the UN, then back down this way and around, and then back into the South Street Seaport. Oh, terrific. And the cost runs ru roughly? The cost is uh, 12 for adults and half price for children, as always, uh, okay. at Circle Line. And one of the wonderful things is you start and end right here at the South Street Seaport area, which has wonderful museums, great ancient history in the shipping, and, of course, good food down here. A beautiful place. This starts today, right? This, Celebration, this the kickoff cruise? This starts today. All right. Perry, Jane, how about a cruise this afternoon to try to say cool? <laughs> After our naps, sounds like a good idea. Thanks a lot, Joe. It's now 646. Coming up, the Blue Jays shoot down the Bronx Bombers at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> First place in the American. You would prefer to be called now?